Welcome back to The Breakfast. It's time for Off the Press. Uh, we have a quick review of the major stories making headlines across Nigeria today. And um, we'll first of all say good morning to our guest, uh, Mr. Ezekiel Nyaitok. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Always a pleasure to be with you. Good to see you. Let's kick off with stories from the Punch newspapers this morning and see what we can find. Uh, there's uh, something there on Boko Haram. Uh, I think it's a big story that you can see there um, on your screen in a few seconds. Um, yes, that's what it is. It says Boko Haram attack plot on National Assembly and VIP locations causes scare. Uh, Reps committee uh, chair notifies legislators of police warning indicating terror attack. Lawmakers adjust movement to enter and exit complex through presidential villa. Also, Aquaibom governor's wife leads protests over slain job seeker. We can also find on the punch this morning. Uh, okay, well, it says here, Southern governors meet scheduled Delta summit over insecurity. Revenge-seeking cultists attack OPC men in Ondo, six killed. And division emerges in APC as Adeye attacks Fayemi over members' suspension. Boko Haram killed five soldiers and 25 orders in Borno attack, says uh, sources. And uh, El Rufai receives 27 freed Kaduna College students, two missing. That's a really sad uh, ending to that. And also this morning, Nigeria nears 5G deployment as NCC. Uh, Nightcom Sat sign MOU. Government approach wrong. Ransom payment won't end kidnapping, says former president Olusegun Obasanjo. And uh, cash crunch, labor draws battle lines, warns against salary slash. Hmm. On the Nation newspaper this morning, 27 abducted forestry college students freed after 57 days. Buhari released 16 Greenfield University undergraduates and others. Above the headline on the Nation newspaper, Labour rejects bid to cut workers' wage and build affordable houses. FIRS to deduct cash from tax defaulters' bank accounts. Why power supply must be prioritised by Illumilu? Nine die in Ikariakoko or Award Day of Violence. Nigeria set for 5G technology. NCC, NRG, Comsat sign MOU. Banks directors back CBN's action on First Bank. It's Chelsea versus Manchester City. English clubs in European Champions League final. And SARS, Lagos supported businesses with 940 million naira. Mbaka's drama rocks Enugu. Also on the Nation newspaper, APC Senate caucus tackles PDP on insecurity and economy. Lastly, on the Nation newspaper, Herders Oshun on red alert. All right. Now on the Guardian newspapers this morning, Federal Ministry fails to keep records of houses built and sold in six years. Also on The Guardian, relief has freed 27 students arrive after 56 days. Parents commend roles played by Obasanjo and Gumi. Also bandits return to Kaduna, raise church, kill two, abduct many. Hmm. PDP flays federal government surrender to terrorists and bandits. And Catholics uh, run amok over Mbaka's alleged disappearance, attack Bishop's residence. Also on The Guardian this morning, federalism is the answer after all. NLC rejects planned reduction in salaries of workers. Reps urge suspension of uh, census over insecurity and others. Also, telcos begin SIM activation as more lines get NIN linkage. Lastly, minority ethnic groups will lose more if Nigeria breaks, Obasanjo warns. Those are the stories on The Guardian News this morning. On the Daily Independent, FIRS to deduct from tax defaulters' bank accounts. Delay in 500 billion naira FMBN recapitalization threatens affordable housing. Reps to probe military operations nationwide. Insecurity reps call, off, call for suspension of planned national census. Remaining abducted 27 Kaduna Forestry College students released. NCC awaits FG's final decision on FG deployment. FEC approves 6.2 billion naira for power projects. And uh, other stories here we've seen on uh, other papers. But lastly, Obasanjo worries over small ethnic groups 
if country splits. I think those are the stories we're taking this morning on uh, the newspapers. Ms. Aya Tooks, thanks for joining us again. Yeah, thanks. Um, yep. All right, the biggest story we've seen on our newspapers uh, this morning is about the 27 schoolgirls from the F Federal College of Forestry Mechanization who you know, were freed after 57 days. Uh, remember that 10 students had been freed in two batches of five each. The parents had been protesting at the gates of the National Assembly uh, complex in Abuja. But the good news is after you know, lots of lots of threats, you know, ransom demands, Kaduna State Government is system, no ransom will be paid. Finally, they are free. Your thoughts on this, Mr. Ezekiel, Talk. Um, first, I don't know which side of the coin to take. When the, the, the people are free, everybody is happy, as you can see. But how do we look at the other side of the coin, where a young lady who was seeking for a job was gruesomely murdered? She will never be free. She will never be seen again. So um, uh, I, I wore black this morning to pay tribute to um, uh, Inyobon Umore, who was gruesomely murdered. And I also want to um, uh, thank the, the, the Akwaibom State Government for issuing a prompt statement condemning the action, because there were lots of conspiracy theories. And um, uh, also, yesterday, the wife of the governor, uh, Lady Martha Udo, was on the street uh, and mobilized a lot of young people. These were things that government did to show in no small measures that they are not part of it and that they condemn it. But I want to say that there's a third leg. Actually, I run two live radio programs on Wednesdays in Aquaipo, and um, the two lines for the two hours were jammed. And the, the, the case has gone beyond the, the state, the nation has gone international, and I want to appeal to the IGP, the Acting Inspector General of Police, that please use this case to inspire confidence in, in Nigerians. They believe that this case is going to be swept under the carpet. They believe that the confessions of the boy that were initially made public, that he had certain um, associations, uh, we, this is in public space, and please, I beg you, let the IGP uh, um, stand on it and ensure that nobody is protected. If this is going to become the case that will just no, no, open up the space and let people be named and shamed and made to pay for it so we can have a Senate claim, please let it be done. That said about Inyobong Umore, let's come back to the abducted students. And I rejoice uh, at this time with the family and um, with Nigerians. We prayed about them. We, are care, we care about them. And um, it's a thing of joy. But let me end on this note. I want to call on Mr. President to let us know what the policy of the federal government is on paying ransom. Past President OBJ has um, come hard on the past administration and the present, uh, talking about um, 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 uh, my brother Goodluck Jonathan and our President Buhari. That these two administrations have emboldened, empowered, you know, the, 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 these terrorists, these, these murderers, and uh, they have, they've, they've gotten so, it's become such an enterprise that we are going to, as a nation, have to take very hard decisions. And Mr. President should address us and, and prepare us to take hard decisions. No matter how you love your egg, you're not going to be able to eat the omelette if you're not ready to break the shell. So it's a choice that the president has to put on the table and take so that when things are done, we will be able to move along with him because there may be collateral damages, but for goodness sake, how long are we going to be kept? Nobody's, look at the National Assembly, all the papers, you know. It's become headlines because they say, oh, there's a likelihood of them being attacked. How, I, I mean, it's just commonsensical that for you to take off the fire, just remove the oxygen from it. Just, 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 just take the wind off the sail and everything will come in. These are not rocket science, but to what extent is government really complicit in the insecurity? We really need to sit down and have very honest discussion because these things are not as mysterious as they want us to think. All right. So back to the issue, 
Let me wow. thank um, God first and then rejoice with the parents and all Nigerians for the freedom of these 27 students. And we look forward to the freedom of the others from the, from the uh, Greenfield University. Um, that's it for now. All right. Um, we're having a, a more extended discussion on this uh, sometime on the program this morning. Uh, so hopefully we can, you know, unbundle more of it. But let's now talk about the um, finance minister and uh, Labour's reaction to the idea of cutting down salaries. Uh, she, of course, made statements yesterday saying that um, Nigeria needs to find ways to reduce its uh, cost of governance. And it's very likely that they might consider reducing worker salaries. Uh, what's your reaction to that? Um, do you agree it's, that, yes, we need to cut down on cost of governance? It bothers me how this government just don't understand what tax and strategy means. It just bothers me something that you can get very easily. You go about it the hard way. How do you expect that you sit down here and tell the workers, I'm going to cut your salaries? I expected that it would be a three-step approach. Step one, Mr. President comes and says, cost of governance is too much. I'm starting from my cabinet. As from today, one, two, three, four measures, okay, I'm going to take. I don't mind what it costs the, the, the national fleet. If I need to go on private, uh, on, on public uh, you know, transportation, I don't care. He comes and says, Nigerians, I've got to make the sacrifice. My ministers, you've got to be ready for it. He puts that down as step one. Step two, he looks at the, you know, the MDAs and looks at every national assembly. Everybody is... Uh, before you call workers, workers have seen it coming. And they will say, okay, even if the workers want to resist, we will tell workers, cool down now, see the way it is now. It's a sacrifice for the nation. But when National Assembly is intact, feeling fly, and then Mr. President is, is not even around, I don't even know what to say. And then you, your first attack is that of the workers. I mean, it's just... It's just I don't know the words to use, but it's, it's the highest, you know, uh, uh, display of lack, lack of tact and strategy. Yesterday we spoke that about... That was a work I wouldn't accept. Yeah, the NLC, of course, um, has um, put out their own thoughts concerning this. Yesterday we spoke about uh, the 2021 budget and the uh, padding that has already been spotted by budget. Uh, we right. spoke about, you know, the That's amount right. of uh, projects that have uh, repeated uh, you know, in that uh, thing. That's and right. of course, over and over and over, we spoke, right. we've, we've repeatedly made statements concerning blocking leakages in government and how billions of Naira continue to just disappear across Nigeria um, in different MDAs mm -hmm. across the country. Why do you think the government hasn't taken a closer look at any of all of this and found ways to reduce wastage of government funds instead? Because um, <laughs> the answer is just as simple as can be. In confusion, in secrecy, thrives corruption. Look at the average civil servant. His salary cannot take care of himself alone, not to, not to talk of his, 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 his um, family. But they are all living good. Not all, a good number of them. If you look at the houses in Abuja, I work in the real estate subsector. Please tell me the owners of all these things. You realize that the number one culprit are the civil servants. There's something about the civil service that is just not straight. And I really had expected that a man like President Buhari will come to sit down knowing that He's on the last leg of his life with respect to his age. You know, if somebody like me, I'm 57 going to 58, I'm seeing myself as retiring because I'm already a grandfather. Then how much more my president? So the least he can do is, 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 is give his life, give his all. But it seems like this was just his retirement benefit. And he's feeling, he's feeling pretty where he is. I expected that a man like him would look into the civil service, everybody will respect him. Every, you know, when we came up first, everybody was talking about body language, body language. And then you, you, you look at the lion, and uh, you discover that there's a, there's a string tied to a big pole. I said this last week. 
And then you can go as close as to the lion and just, hello, hello, knowing that there's nothing, he can't do more than a dead rat. So the, the president has lost that, that bite, that sting. I don't know who is going to help us. I think Nigerians should brace up and wake up to take our destinies in our hands legally, officially, and formally. This is not the time for you to say, this is my person, that's not my person. This is the time for us to profile the chief executive for the office of the president. And that leads me to a little story in, um, in, in one of the papers, I think that's Daily Independence, talking about the NDDC board. I want to appeal to Mr. President. Right now, there's a young man there, Mr. Akwa, who is, by my estimation, doing very well, absolutely well. But there is a, pro a you know, constitutional provision for a board. I want to appeal to Mr. President. Let him decide if the MD ship is going to a particular state. Let him get a professional profiling, you know, you know, a recruitment company to look for the best in that, in that, in that state. That of the chairman, I'm not really bothered because the chairman of NDDC is more ceremonial. But that of the chief executive, the MD CEO, please don't tell politicians to bring your name unless you don't mean well for the night to Delta. Let that place be professionalized. Aqua has come in as a professional, he's doing well. But because of constitutional provisions, time will come when you have to give way to a proper board. Please let the recruitment of that board be done by KPMG. I don't know any of these professional profiling uh, organizations, recruitment organizations, so that they give us a chief executive who okay. is not a government appointee, so to speak, from the governor to work for election. That's where, you know, all these things about politics, about funding election. Is the NDDC set up to fund elections, or is it set up as an independent body to see to the development of the Niger Delta region? This is one right. appeal I want to make to Mr. President. He can do this for me. I will forget everything in the past and hail him well. All right. Mr. Uh, Yeto, there's not. a big... There's a big well, story we're seeing. Election. <laughs> maybe there's, not. <laughs> there's a big story we're seeing here on the Punch newspaper. It says Boko Haram attack plot on National Assembly and VIP locations causes scare. So there's a there's a warning here that there's a planned attack by Boko Haram insurgents, you know, to basically destroy government facilities, assets in Abuja, including the National Assembly complex and some key locations. Now, this is an intelligence report that, you know, was released on May 6th. And uh, security agencies obviously have said they are on top of the issue. Security has been beefed up in and around the complex since last week. Thursday, you know, they're checking vehicles entering the premises, you know, so there's just been a lot of security activities around this, you know, we know that soldiers have also joined the regular sergeants at arms and men of the Nigerian Police Force, Department of State Services, you know, around the gates of the National Assembly Complex and all of that. So remember that we also see a statement from the DSS um, just on Sunday that there is a plot, an alleged plot by religious and political leaders to cause a disruption in government. And this one now, a, a plot of Boko Haram or by Boko Haram to uh, basically destroy key assets in Abuja. What do you make of all these security threats at this time? You, you, you know, um, some things really bother me. And one of those is, please, how is the life of Senate President Lawan, more important than the life of Inyobo Mumore, than the life of Udawudaw Donsora, you say, who is that? Than the life of Ibrahim that nobody knows. When will we stop this mindset of thinking that the people that we elect to protect us, to serve us, are the people that must be protected and served? When would you realize that the number of killings in the northeast, the number of killings in the northwest, the southwest, the south south, the southeast, the north central, the number of killings on a daily basis should make more headlines than the number of that that, that the, 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 the the perception of a possibility of an attack. Look at the bold headline of National Assembly where our deities are, where our lords are, where our gods are, where our oppressors are, where the owners of Nigeria are. And we're just at the fringes watching. A time has come when, like my sister Yusuf says, this is a time when no Nigerian 
should be more Nigerian than any Nigerian. All right. Hmm. Um, I think we can uh, also just squeeze in your thoughts on uh, Reverend Father Ejike Mbaka and uh, the uh, drama that has uh, emerged from you know, in the last one week. Uh, the, um, there's a news this morning that he has been suspended by uh, Bishop Onaga for one week, or uh, one month, I beg your pardon. Yeah, 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 that's um, that, uh, the tale of two cities. And um, I have a lot of respect for the Catholic Church because they are socially responsible, probably more than any other church. And um, there's all these issues of the discussion between church and state, and church should stay out of state. I don't believe that. They shouldn't stay out of state. But there's a man that should be studied. That man is Reverend Chris Okotie. That man had, you know, ran for presidency, and yet he was the pastor of a church. And I happened to have been in that church for a long time before I relocated to Abuja. And while he was contesting, he was able to draw a line between his politics and his service in the church. PDP members were there, APC members were there, other members of the other. In fact, the day he wanted to take politics, he said he would talk on that on behalf of Fresh Party, but he wants people from PDP, people from P. And everybody, they had a very, very good dialogue. What am I saying? Let pastors exercise a lot of wisdom in approach. They can't just let us and say, oh, stay on politics. No, 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 no. They must be involved in politics, but they must be there as guiding light and not for personal benefit. Personal benefit, I don't agree. But you must encourage your people to take up the civic responsibilities. You must tell them what those civic responsibilities are. You must be able to bring out the profiling basis on which you should choose a candidate. Look at character, look at capability, look at competence. The pastors, the imams, are the best people to drive these ethics and characters in politics. So the issue of leaving them out for me is out of the window but if you were squeezing this in please let me squeeze in a little bit which is about recapitalization of the federal mortgage bank it worries me and bothers me to what extent our government don't understand appreciate the place of housing in in the economy of state in job creation in human dignity chapter 2 section 14 subsection 2b say that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. How do you talk of welfare without housing? The housing subsector is suffering because we have not paid attention. Federal 500 billion, what is that in our economy? And do you know what effect it will have? The Federal Mortgage Bank should be recapitalized as a priority and then government should look at housing as a major driver of the economy and job creation. When they do this, they'll be the better for it. All right. I think that's where we'll wrap it up this morning. Ezekiel and I talk, thank you so much for uh, starting out Thursday uh, for us. And of yes. course, uh, we wish you a great day ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Stay so with us. Uh, today in history, I am going back to tell you about uh, the story of three women who were kidnapped, you know, and uh, a good story, you know, success just after many years in captivity, just like the good news we've heard about the um, 27 students in yeah. Kaduna. Right, and of course, I'm telling you about the uh, day, of course, that uh, good luck Jonathan became president after, you know, all the drama that emerged before that. We'll be back after the short break. <laughs>